Okay, well, this is uh, Tech Math 2, and we're doing the review of section 4 through 5. We're up to question 7 out of 10 already because I forgot to turn on the damn camera. And uh, so we'll do a, a quickie go back to the beginning and say, well, the, the first guy um, we can solve and we get an answer of 10 seconds. And so we can call it D for 10, but we really have three significant digits, so a better answer would be 10.0 seconds. Either one will be okay. Uh, the second problem, we need to find the slope of a line, the, the equation of line passing through a point with some slope. And um, we go to the front part of the book, get a point-slope formula, fill everything in, come up with our answer. And we find out that the correct answer has, in fact, been removed. And so we put up the correct answer there. And then uh, problem number three, we're going to do the same thing, except now we need a line perpendicular to another line passing through some point. So we remember that the, the slope of the line perpendicular is minus the slope of the line it's perpendicular to. So we end up using that, go back to the point for the slope formula and come up with an answer, which happens to actually be there, A. Am I talking fast enough? And then uh, problem number four, we decided it was just a quiz problem anyway. It came up with the same answer that we had on the quiz. Uh, problem number five, we think might be a quiz answer anyway. Uh, we used our calculator to find the roots of the uh, equation and then factored it knowing, seeing that we knew what the roots were and came up with the sum. And uh, problem number six, we need a range and domain. We can't take the square root of a negative number, so whatever is inside the square root has to be greater than um, zero. So we figure out what that is, and we find out that the domain has to be uh, greater than or equal to 2, which gives us a range between minus infinity, and no one complained about that, minus infinity to 5. All right, so is that better? You, you're laughing in the back row there earlier. Is that what you're laughing about? Didn't put a minus sign there? Yeah, typical. All right. And now we're doing the last problem. Okay, so we're doing problem number seven because now we're caught up. All right, so we've got to find the line of the equation passing through a point parallel to another line. And the issue is the slope of the original line is two, so the line parallel to it has to have the same slope as two. We look in the front of our book again, use the point-slope formula, and get y minus a minus eight is going to equal to the slope of 2, x minus 3. And then we have uh, y plus 8 is uh, 2x minus 6. And then we'd have, uh, well, we, we could write it, y is equal to uh, 2x minus 14. There'd be nothing wrong with that answer. That'd be perfectly OK. Or we could write it minus 2x plus y is equal to uh, minus 14. That'd be perfectly okay, too. Um, or we could say, gee, you know, I really don't want a minus sign first. So I could write it as 2x minus y is equal to 14. I could write it that way as well. So I'm going to go with uh, the 2x minus y is 14. 2x minus y is uh, 14, because that way I have less minus signs. But th there's nothing wrong with that, that equation. That's perfectly OK. There's nothing wrong with it, so it needs perfectly OK. And uh, just a matter of spelling for your, let's see, would your 10th uh, grade geometry teacher care which one you put down? Um, that you put anything down, she would have been perfectly happy, right? Yeah, so. Or was it a he? No, it was a she. There's no geometry teachers out there that are he's, right? Yeah, typical. That's part of the problem. Yeah, exactly. All right. That must have been seven. So moving on to eight. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen?
still appears nothing happened. Well, something did happen, so that's all that matters. Now, why is it that uh, mana? Okay, so there we are. I'm good there. Get rid of this one. All right. I want to find the slope of a line passing through these two points. All right, well, the slope of the line is um, change in y divided by change in x. All right, so um, minus 4 minus a minus 9 divided by minus 7 minus a minus 1. All right, so um, 5 divided by minus 6. Minus 5 over 6. Slope minus 5 over 6. Do we have any other way to do it? Yes, we do. We, we could do it in a graphical way. So we could go and say, here's minus 7, minus 4, because it look like a 4 right there. And here's minus 1, minus 9, And there's our, this, that's our line right there. And then we're going to do the same thing. We just say, well, I, uh, my change in y is minus 5. So I go down that way, minus 5. And my change in x is 6. So I'd say the slope is that, which is the same slope that I had doing it the other way. So I, don't, I, I could draw a picture and do the adding or subtracting. Or I could just uh, do the adding and subtracting without a picture. I sort of like pictures a little bit. Oh, distance between two points. All right, so we remember our distance. Oh, I didn't do nine yet? Oh, bummer. How could I have possibly have missed nine? Oh, there it is. Uh, factor completely. Hmm. Is there anything? Is there such a thing as an in, incomplete factorization? I don't know. Two x x. Now, if I'm going to get 18, that could be 1 times 18, or that could be 2 times 9, or 3 times 6, right? So those are my choices, and I want a 15. So if I get 12 plus 3, right, so plus 6 plus 3, now I've got 12 plus 3 is 15, and that would be my final answer. 2x plus 3 x plus 6. And, or I could just take out my calculator and go second function, if it was on, second function's polynomial. And I could put in a 2 for my A and a 15 for my B and an 18 for my C. And it tell me that my my roots are minus 3 over 2 and minus 6. So um, if I want a 3 over 2 there, um, yeah, so then I go and say, well, it's obviously x plus 6. That's what the 3 over 2 guy is. And 2x minus plus 3 would be the minus 3 over 2. And you go there. And then I'd have a factor 2. But I don't, I don't see where that gained me much using my calculator, but I, I could could do that. Okay, now if there's ten questions on the study guide, are there gonna be ten questions on the quiz on the test? No, so. Yeah, who cares, right? No, 10, 20, 30, doesn't matter, right? Whatever there is is perfectly okay. But yeah, the chances are that's what, that's gonna happen. All right. So my distance formula says the distance is the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. Okay, so, oh yeah, it is. 
So um, that's in the front cover of the book. The front cover of the book has it a little bit different. But it's distance formula x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So um, there shouldn't be any problem with that because you can always look in the front cover of your book. All right, so back to what we're doing. Which one's x2 and which one's x1? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right. So um, for uh, we're going to make this guy 2 and this guy 1 for the sake of the problem. And uh, we'll do it twice. So um, square root of um, 7 minus a minus 5. 12 squared. Um, minus 3 minus a minus 8 would be 5 squared. And we recognize that as 13. So the distance is going to be 13. I'm going to do it again. And we're going to say this guy is 1, this guy is 2. Okay, so distance, square root of um, minus 5, minus 7, minus 12 squared, minus 8, minus and minus 3, minus 5 squared with a plus sign, and it's still going to give me 13. So it doesn't, doesn't matter which way I go, it's going to be perfectly okay either way. Okay, now, did anybody um, bother to look to see if I put the quiz grades in from last week, from last Friday? No one bothered to look? All right. All right, so we'll go.